Hey, good morning, friends. We're doing our walk again today. And I got Mowgli with me over here. Hey, Mugs. Hey, Mowgli. Mugs, I'm talking to you. What do you smell? Hey, come here. Here. Hey, say hi. Come here. Mowgli, heel. Heel. Good boy. Right here. Hey, Mugs, say hi. He's not really interested in y'all this morning. He's on a walk, so he's excited. Hey, I wanted to talk to you about something that um, has been on my heart. Um, mm, it's been going on for a little while. I don't know if it has to do with the last three years. Probably has something to do with it. And moving to Nashville and just having a new album out and wondering what God's doing, you know, and um, anytime I'm in that funk of, hmm, I don't know if you can relate, but feeling like maybe God doesn't hear you or see you or you feel like you're in the wilderness a little bit, um, instead of wallowing in that and trying to shake it off ourselves, which I try to do sometimes, um, because it's the straight and narrow. Um, it's much better than wallowing in it like a pig in mud to actually go to the word, right? Or listen to a message. And Ronnie and I have really been enjoying um, Pastor Robert Morris a lot. He's a teacher preacher, totally a teacher preacher. And so there was a, the first one that popped up was something about being in the wilderness or something with wilderness in it. And I said, oh, let's watch that one. And it was so good because the way he teaches, teacher preacher, the way the teacher preacher does it, Robert Morris, he'll have um, like three points or sometimes he'll have five points, but he always breaks it open to the word where he backs it up with scripture. In fact, he cracked a joke and said, don't try Bible trivia with me. I wouldn't want to. He's, he's studied and showed himself approved, definitely. So he was talking about, it has to do, when we're in the wilderness, how to break through is, you know that song, Head and Shoulders, Knees and Toes, right? When you're little, <laughs> we taught it to our kids. It's not that, but it's hands, knees, and heart. And he talked about different denominations and not in a bad way and not about their a little tiny bit about their differences, but not in judgment at all. But some some denominations think that raising our hands was for like the Old Testament, you know, and raising our hands in praise. And sometimes it freaks people out in church, um, especially if they haven't been around it. But he backed it up with scripture on how we should worship the Lord and excuse me a second, Mowgli's getting on someone's lawn. Okay, good, he got off. How he backed it up in scripture was, you know, in Psalms, I lift my hands, Lord, unto thy name. I lift my hands up unto thy name. My lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee. I will lift up my hands unto thy name. And he had four or five scriptures from the Old Testament and some different denominations or pastors have said, but it's really not in the new. And he brought forth a scripture that said almost the exact same thing. And I've, I found that as reading through the Bible again this year with my husband, Ronnie, um, that there's so many, um, affirmations in the new Testament that were in the old and they, they correspond with each other and they solidify the truth to me in my heart, in my mind, in my spirit, in my soul. Uh, and I need it to solidify in my mind. Those of you who know me, sometimes I can be all over the place and I don't enjoy that, <laughs> believe me. But, uh, you know, I don't know. It's, it's my thorn in my side, you know. But my hands need to be in worship and lift up the name of Jesus for who he is, the all-sovereign, all-forgiving, um, all-deserving, master of my life and the one who rescued me 
from the fiery pit and he set my feet on a rock. Yes, he did. <laughs> and it gave me a firm foundation in life and I didn't deserve it, but he, he did it for me as he did it for you. So getting out of the wilderness first in praise and in worship, put on worship music and dance in your own home. You know, you think, oh, you shouldn't dance before the Lord or before people. No, but put on worship music and let the spirit move you by yourself. Just offer up your praise to the Lord through worship. And then our knees, hit our knees in prayer. You know, back up a minute. Okay, so what happens when you get arrested? <laughs> you say, I've never been arrested. Well, those of you who know my story, I have, not once, not twice, not three times. What do they do? Put your hands up. Surrender, right? Put your hands up. Surrender. So surrender your life to him in worship. Surrender your thoughts, your depression, your um, in, inferior complex or doubt and whatever it is that has you in the wilderness, surrender it. Hit your knees in prayer. I forget the scriptures he had right now in kneeling, but I love the posture of kneeling and when I first started my recovery process the Lord um, led me through the 12 steps and through the 12 traditions and through uh, mentorship sponsorship not financial but walking through my life kind of a healing of the memories thing that my mom used to do with a lot of young people um, to hit our knees in the morning. The first thing, hit your knees in the morning because surrendering your day to the Lord in the morning is so much more important than asking him and more effective than asking him to bless your mess at the end of the day, right? So it's a posture, right? It's a posture of I bow before you or even get prostrate before the Lord and just lay yourself out, right? And pray. Um, one of my friend preachers told me he puts on liquid mind. <laughs> it might sound funny, but that's good for me because that's how I sleep at night by listening to liquid mind. It doesn't have any lyrics, just sounds. And it really helps me if something has lyrics, I just start thinking and singing the lyrics because it's like I'm a musical songbook or something and I know a lot of songs that are all in here and they come out while I'm trying to focus on the Lord or be single focused on something that comes in and distracts me. So whatever works for you, maybe worship songs without words, but hit your knees and put yourself in a posture of adoring and bowing before the King of Kings. And then the third thing was our heart. There's a car coming, hang on, I gotta get Moogs. Mowgli, heel. Good boy. I'll talk about the heart in just a second, but I wanna protect two right now from this car. Come on, heel, up here. Good boy. Ah, not there. Be good heel. Good boy. Hang on. Hang on, y'all. This is what we do. He's a good boy. Awfully strained. Come on, folks. People are friendly here. We hardly see any cars, but there was one. So, your heart needs to be soft and tender. I can't completely remember from memory what Robert Morris, Pastor Robert Morris said. But it was, uh, so, uh, it was, um, preparing our heart, uh, giving our heart in its entirety, trusting the Lord with our heart. Um, come on, you help me, you guys. When you hear this, just go ahead and 
put a scripture in there. I don't have the word with me right now. I have it hidden in my heart, <laughs> but I gotta, I gotta dig it out. It's early here. So just making our heart set, keep our heart set in the right direction. So lift our hands in praise and worship. Worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, for all that he's done for us and all that he is. Not just thank you for all the good stuff, God, but you are almighty, all powerful. We know what's going on in this world. We know the end of the story. Do not let your heart be troubled, right? In all things, prayer and supplication before the Lord. We have to give it up. And he talked about in the olden days when when they were traveling and they had camels. Uh, submit yourself to the Lord. Submit your heart to the Lord. And he said the word submit in Hebrew, I believe he was saying, correct me if I'm wrong, but is to roll over. Roll over your burden. That sheep were not designed. You don't hear of any pack sheep, right? So the camels, they put all of their wares on one camel that could hold the water. They all hold water. So when the camel had gone as far as he could go, he would get down and he would lay down and he would roll over and roll over the burden on the ground. And they would know that that camel was done carrying the burden. And so we need, and then they they transfer the goods to another camel and let that camel rest. So we weren't a sheep. They are the sheep of his pasture. He is our shepherd, right? We weren't designed to carry burdens. So we need to roll over and we need to dump our burden on the Lord because he has broad shoulders and he's already done the work to to fulfill his will in our life we just have to worship we have to bow on our knees and we have to surrender and submit our heart to his will right so god bless you all i hope this helps you i love you dearly thanks for hanging with me and I just wanted to share what I'm learning in my time of being in the wilderness. And I sure hope it helps you today. God bless you. You're on the walk with me. And Moogs, he's way ahead. But, you know, he's got four legs and I got two. So, God bless. Have a beautiful day. Bye.